Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Our God is gracious to us. Hallelujah. And there's many reasons why we should worship the Lord, and I'm looking forward to seeing you. Wish some of you were here this morning. You're welcome to come. And uh, we've been keeping things cleaned up, sanitized, so you can come on in and, and uh, safely. All right. The word of the Lord says, Blessed be the Lord my strength, David said, which teaches which teach my hands to war and my fingers to fight. He said, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. And on that, because our God is good and because, because the Lord is, has lifted up his people, let us lift up hands and praise the wonderful name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to be in this church worship service. Father, we give you the praise, honor, and glory for your goodness and your mercy. Dear Lord, have your way. Thank you. Thank you once again for this wonderful day. Hallelujah to your name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a nice, loud round of applause.
sing Victory in Jesus. Page 240. Victory in Jesus. doing, and um, I want people to be on the lookout for a building, and this is how we're going to do it. 
What we're going to do, I want you to talk to people in the community about church buildings being open, okay? Don't worry about calling the real estate companies. Just talk to someone. Talk, I mean, talk to as many people. Do you know any churches around here that are open or anybody selling churches or whatever? Start doing that. I guarantee we're running into something. So, um, so we vehemently want to get up out of here. Yes. Vehemently. And uh, so we got stuff going on in this building and we're ready to move. We're gonna move on up to glory. So I'm gonna move on out of here, okay? As we move to glory. Yes. At this time, uh, you know, let's go ahead and, ahead and take up offerings. Remember, all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their time and gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord. I would like to ask Sister Constance, if you don't mind asking God's blessing on the gift and the giver, please, ma'am. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I ask that you touch each and every giver, Lord God. Lord Jesus, I ask that you touch those that don't have to give, Lord God. Lord, I ask that you bless obedience tenfold, Lord Jesus, as we give unto your house, Lord God. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> has the link on our web page so um, there you can pay your time and giving offerings and all that good stuff so that the work of the Lord can continue on and it is continuing on strong and so let's be faithful in our giving and at this time Sister Davis is going to sing a special to us as unto the Lord let's do it
looking forward to this day. How God is good. The blood would never lose its power, right? Amen. We come out of the book of John, chapter 6. I like John, chapter 6. The more I learn about life, <laughs> and I just feel like reading a little bit. I can read. John, chapter 6, verse 1. Six, verse one. All right. Let's do it to it. The word says, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. The great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near or nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, "Where shall we buy bread that these may eat?" And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, two hundred. Penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And I want to read that one more time if I can, a little bit clearer. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. The word nigh means near. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company, Come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him or to find out about him or test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And with the help of the Lord, we want to preach on the message entitled, The God of Abundance. The God of Abundance. Let us pray. I would like to ask Reverend Serrano, Bless the service. Heavenly Father, thank you for the reading of your word, Lord God. Thank you for each and every person that is listening in, who is present here in church with us, Lord God. We ask, Lord, that by your Holy Ghost you will touch each and every soul, Lord. Help us to take in what you're saying, Lord, to draw closer to you, Lord God, as we call your name, Lord. Pray that you help pastor, lead him and guide him, Lord. Make the truth come alive in his heart, Lord, Lord God, as you lay it upon Give unction and Lord God, and the boldness to bring it forth as you will, Lord. We pray that the result of this service is that your will is done, that your name is exalted, and the people will come to you. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> the God of abundance. I believe that that Jesus is the God of abundance. God the Father is the God of abundance, and God the Holy Ghost is the God of abundance. And there's a wonderful scripture that says, now unto, uh, now unto him, speaking now unto God, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can imagine or even think. 
And not only is he, is he able, but he's willing to do it in your life. Amen. He's willing to do it in our lives. God gives us a yes. Because the promises of God are in him, yes. And in him, amen. The Lord wants to do it in our life this morning. God wants to do it. He's willing to do it. All we have to do is believe it. That the Lord is for us and God is for us. There is nothing too hard for the Lord this morning. It may be too hard for you. It may be too hard for me. It may be too hard for our imagination. Harder than what, whatever we can dream up. But there is nothing too hard for the Lord. You are not so difficult that God cannot fix your problem. He can fix it. And how does he fix problems? How does he fix our problems? He begins with fixing us. Amen. And he fixes us from the inside out. He said, cleanse ye first the inside of the cup and the outside shall be clean also. Amen. The Lord changes our circumstances by changing our hearts. Not only does he change our heart, but he strengthens us. He gives us power. He gives us the ability to be able to walk with him. To be able to keep his commandments. Amen. He gives us the, uh, the ability to lift ourselves up over drugs. Yeah. He gives us the ability to lift ourselves up over alcohol. If you found yourself failing in programs and found yourself failing in, failing in teachings and right. in various churches even. All you got to do is call on the God of abundance. Amen. All you got to do is call on the Lord and say, Lord, unction me afresh. Yeah. That I may be able to control myself. Yes. That I may be able to discipline myself enough to walk with you yes. and be what you would have me to be. Yes. So that I can feel your presence and know that I'm on my way to heaven instead of guessing or whether or not I'm right with you. I'm talking about the God of abundance yes. who said when we were without strength, what did Christ do? He died for the ungodly. Yes. He died for the weak. He died for the person who cannot help themselves or could not help themselves. I'm here to tell you this morning that the Lord is able to empower you to be what he intended you to be from the very day you were born. God is able. He is the God of abundance. And in this scripture, it illustrates what God can do. This scripture illustrates what the Lord can do because I believe this. And that's the reason why I can preach it with passion. In the word of the Lord, Jesus sat with his disciples. I like this. And it was coming time as we read. It was getting close to the feast of the Passover. And no doubt these people had to go home and get prepared or whatever. But in the word of the Lord. Jesus, as we read, lifted up his eyes, and I'm, I just had to do this over again, and saw a great company come unto him, a great company. In other words, it wasn't just a little bit of people, but there were thousands of people who were coming unto him. And so here the Lord was about to use this to teach his disciples about the God of abundance. He was teaching these men because of the fact that they were going to be the ones that kicked the church off pretty much. They were the ones who were going to uh, uh, get things going, get things going. And, and, and so we and we today are enjoying the very ministry of Peter and of yes, Paul, yes. people who have seen, who are eyewitnesses of the very uh, power of God. They were eyewitnesses of uh, the abundance of God. That God is able to do things larger than them. Than yes. them. That God is able to supply their needs when they go through the battle. And God will supply the church and he will bless families that follow him and who know him in a reality. God knows how to put clothes on your back to that today. The Lord knows how to put food on your table. The Lord knows how to heal people and he still does that today. All we got to do is believe it for ourselves and say, God, I need you moving in my family. I need you touching parts of my life that is lacking. Yes. And God knows how to make up the difference. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care uh, if you cannot pay your bills today. I'm here to tell you, if you follow Jesus, he'll teach you how to pay your bills. Yes. He'll teach you how to be blessed. He'll, he'll begin yeah. to bring abundance uh, in your life. Amen. If you don't have enough fruit in your life as a Christian,
Christian God knows how to bring abundance of fruit in your life to where you have all the fruits of the Spirit, uh, to where you're not lacking in anything uh, concerning uh, uh, God and the kingdom. Uh, God knows how to make strong those who are weak. And in this scripture here, the disciples got to look at this thing because the teacher was teaching that he's the God of abundance. Here when this multitude came, Jesus says to Philip, he said, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Thousands of people out there. How are we going to get the money? Or, or, or where are we going to buy bread? We, we need some money to go buy some bread. Have you ever been there? Right. How is this going to happen? And how is that going to happen? You know, I've grown to a point where I don't worry about how this is going to happen. Because I believe in the God of abundance. Yes. I believe that the Lord knows how to bless. I believe that God can do that. And not only do I believe it, but you know, I follow that. Y'all, you have to do is follow God in your situation. And don't go around with the woes and with the blues. And remember that God can do it. All we have to do is follow. We have to believe enough. To the point where we allow it to get down in our feet and into our hands. Yes. And as Sister Serrano was talking about, we need to get this into our attitudes also. Yes. The time when you are lacking, the time when you're not doing good or whatever, or you're down in the dumps, is not the time to have a bad attitude toward the God of abundance. It's time to have a right attitude because with an attitude of gratitude, you begin to build faith in your life. Faith begins to rear up and says, I know my God can do it. And it gives you a clear head so you can be able to think level headed when it comes to walking with God in your situation. God can do it. Amen. Jesus was level headed. He wasn't looking at this thing all crazy. How are we going to do this in worry? He said, how are we going to do this knowing what he can do? Amen. I'm glad that God knows what he can do this morning. Amen. The Lord is not confused. The devil cannot confuse him. He cannot be blinded by his circumstance or what's going on now around him. He just said this to prove him. All right. He wanted to find out what answer he was going to give him. But at this time, Philip's answer was 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient. It's not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. In other words, there ain't even enough to feed them a little bit, Lord. There's not enough. Now that wasn't really necessarily the answer Jesus was looking for, but he knew what the natural mind would say. Mm. Oh, it's not enough. Mm. But you see, it's not about the amount that's there. It's about the God that's standing yeah. before you. The right answer would be, God, I know that you can do this. Amen. You are enough to feed all of this. Amen. Amen. You are enough to help our needs. You are enough to meet us wherever we are. Yes. You are enough to give us strength. You are enough to give us power. I'm looking to you. I'm not looking at the thing. Right. I'm not looking what I'm presently in, but I'm looking to God. You know, that's what the sinner needs to do this morning. Amen. Instead of looking at the sin and saying, oh, everybody sins and everybody fails and everybody this and everybody messes up. We need to look to the God who doesn't mess up. Yes, we need to look to the God who is perfect. Yes. We need to look to a God, uh, to the God that knows how to take that lying tongue out of our mouth. Uh, the God that knows how to remove cursing lips, profanity, uh, and give us a clean mind. Uh, the Lord can give you a clean mind this morning. Because I read in the Bible how that the blood cleanses our consciences. I believe it's over in the book of Hebrews. I believe it's Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, that the blood cleanses our conscience. That we may be able to serve God. Cleansing our evil conscience. Amen. Amen. How you know that's, that's down to the nature, isn't it? The Lord knows how to do it. We need to look to the God that's able to save from sin. Instead of looking at our human a frail, our frail human makeup saying that we cannot do it. Yes, you cannot do it in, the, in and of yourself, but I know God can do it. Yeah. God knows how to save. God knows how to do it. Yes, the Lord, uh, the answer he get, he, Philip had given him was, we don't have sufficient. Then as we went on, uh, Andrew
Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, begin to say, hey, there's a boy over here that has five barley loaves and two fishes. But then he said, after he said that, what are they among so many? All he was doing was looking at the bread and the two little fishes instead of looking at the God before him. And no doubt Jesus went, hmm, exactly what I thought. Exactly. I already knew these folks would think that way because they cannot look to the Lord who is able. Uh, they just could not see it happening in their life. Have you ever been there where you just could not see it happening? We need to look to God. We need to look to the Lord. They, did, they couldn't even imagine of what was going to take place. They couldn't even come up with what was going to take place and how God was going to do it. And sometimes uh, you begin to bring anxiety upon yourself and worry upon yourself when you don't know how God is going to do it. Yes. Don't worry about how God is going to do it. Amen. Begin to walk with him and just get to know him and say, Lord, if anything, I can draw closer to you right now. Amen. There is something I can do in my situation. A lot of times when people go through things, they begin to go away from God. Yes. But they begin to push away because really they act in the place of God when they do that. You know, I don't want to act in God's stead. You know, some things belong to the Lord. It don't belong to me. All I need to do is draw closer to him and, and get to know him even more and more. We can at least do that when we don't know what to do because there are times in our lives where we don't know what to do. And the response often uh, often is, is that people begin to go for second best. They begin to try to fix it themselves and they fail time in and time out. People begin to fix it themselves. They begin to go to putting up with stuff. Well, I guess I got to put up with this because I just don't see no way out of my situation. <laughs> I'm thinking of a situation and anything. I need to go back to that person because that's the only place I have to go. What you going back to them for? Right. And you don't even like them. Right. Huh? Why would we go back to abuse, real? Why would we go back to something or, or, or bring something in our life that we once put away because we don't understand how we're going to be able to make it? All right. It's called we need to walk with God. That's right. Who doesn't go through that? To where life began to say, you know what? You need to lay down right back over here where you just got out of. You need to settle for this because you don't have enough. My sufficiency is in, in things. That's right. My sufficiency is in God. Amen. 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 And that's what Jesus was telling these people. So he said, he said, make the men sit down. Have them all sit down. And now, obviously, the disciples went to count. That's a lot to count five down. Maybe, you know, 12 to five, five down. They went to count and they brought the numbers back and said, Lord, that's 5,000. And no doubt Jesus said, Give me the fish and give me the bread. And he began to look up to heaven and he asked God to bless this. You know what? I thought about something. I got my little stimulus check sitting on top of my bed. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't cashed out yet. But I said, you know what? I need to pray over this. I need to pray that God will bless it. All right. Because it's there. I don't want it to evaporate. I want it to come back to me over and over again. Yes, amen. In abundance. Yes, amen. And he can do it. Yes. And he's working it out. Amen. He's already worked it out how in my heart to get that thing to continuously come back. All right. And God can do it for you. Amen. I'm nothing special, you know? I'm nothing special. When I say not, I'm nothing special, meaning that God is not, he doesn't have favoritism. He doesn't sit here and say, well, I really like Rod Davis. You know, that's my buddy. Man, he, I made him tall. I made him dark. I made him utterly handsome. He looks cool in his suit. And he smelled good this morning. You know, Boy, you smell good, so I'm going to give you wisdom on how to do this, that, and other. It don't work like that. That's right. And he just favors me over you. That's right. 
Well, you must have been born in the wedlock. You don't know how I was born. I remember this one time the devil lied to me about that. Well, Reverend so-and-so was born in wedlock. And that's the reason why you're going through what you're going through. Very immature. That wasn't the devil. That was my immature thoughts. A lot of people have immature thoughts. A lot of people think like that. I'm not the only one. That's right. Then the Reverend gets up and say, I don't know who my daddy was. I don't know my daddy. And I went wild. These complexes that causes people to go down because they're looking at their circumstance going, God won't do that for me. God will do it for you. Yes. The Lord knows how to save you. Yes, Amen. that's right. You don't have to walk in the middle of the street acting like you crazy, right. talking to yourself. Da, 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 da. You don't have to do that. That's right. That's right. Now, society is saying you have to do that, but you don't have to go around talking to yourself in the middle of the street. That's right. Amen. Because God loves you too. Yes. He'll save you. Yes. He'll give you a sound mind. That's right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. He will. To the point yes. where you're not going out there in the middle of the street embarrassing yourself because you say, I got to settle for meth. I got to settle Go ahead, for crack. Sir. I got to settle for heroin. Right. You can be delivered because he's yes. the God of abundance. Amen. Yes. You look to God's power. You look to God's strength. You look to his everlasting arms. Yeah. Amen. You call on God. God, save me. Yeah. You got a mouth. You can talk. Call on the God of abundance. Yeah. That's what Jesus did. Jesus called on the God of abundance and said, bless this bread. Bless this fish. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, he began to break the bread and begin to break the fish. And he began to dish it out. Uh, and it just kept coming. It just kept yeah. coming. To the point where all 5,000 and their children and the wives got fed. And there were 12, a, a frag, a, a 12 baskets full of food left over for them to take home. Amen. Amen. God got leftovers too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He did so much. He had so much in those baskets and everything that there was enough, I believe, to feed them again. They had a midnight snack. The Lord made sure to know that you met the God of abundance. All right. I'm here to let you know. I told Reverend Serrano, I told my wife, I don't want to talk about what we don't have. Amen. Amen. That's the thing of my past. I can't even bring myself to say that no more. You know? Amen. I don't go around telling my child we don't have enough money. I don't do stuff like that. I never ever told my son that we don't have enough money. Because right. I don't want him to think like that. Mm -hmm. Go we don't have enough money. He never heard it out of my mouth. I can be straight, flat, broke. There ain't no way I'm going to feed that in his heart. See, I can talk about it now. It's because he's older. Mm -mm. Because God can do it. Yes. You know, I, I remember talking to a man down in Cochran, Georgia. I'm not going to make mention of his name. We were in his truck, you know, got into his truck. He got a nice, cool truck. This man is about in his 80s. And he act like a kid. I <laughs> mean, when I say like a kid, he has a very youthful spirit about him. And I remember we was in the backside of Cochran, and he took that Ford F-150 brand spanking new bad to the bone, and he just had to show me how fast that joker was. He was like, ooh, check this out. And this was like a few months ago. I was like, man, he is pretty cool. <laughs> then he drove me over to this nice building. It's a church building and nice property. And he said, watch those guys out there. And as we pulled up, the guys had stood up. They stood up. Both of them stood up, and, and they, uh, they saw him there, and they kind of were honoring him, standing up in respect to him. I was like, wow. And then he rolled down the window, asked them, how you doing? How you doing? And they was, we're doing fine. And it's a place where uh, people get help. They get help from drugs and all this stuff. But it's a nice facility, a nice church. 
He said, you see that building? He said, we didn't have any money to get that building. He said, but God made a way. Wow. You ought to see this building. He said, but God made a way. And, and I, you know, there's a reason God showed me that. All right. You know, God will make a way. And we have to get God in our head instead of getting this, our circumstance in our yes. head, you know? Yes. Because these things that we see convince us that that's just life and that's just the way it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to fail. I'm supposed to be a failure. Nothing wrong with failing, but I'm supposed to be a loser. There's a difference in failing and being a loser. I'm supposed, I'm supposed to live in sin, real. I'm supposed to cheat on my wife. I'm supposed to commit adultery. I'm supposed to smack the kids upside the head. I'm supposed to be abusive. I'm supposed to be in jail. But what about God? All right. Did God put you on this earth for that reason? No. You know, how, I mean, what about looking to God who made this universe yes. and he made it to be perfect? Yes. He made it to be flawed with sickness and right. sin. All right. He made it to be perfect. Amen. And we need to look to God. And say, God, if I can't lift myself up, I'm looking to you. I believe, yes. I at least believe yes. that you can lift me up. Amen. And we call upon him. And we practice it. And like Reverend David said these words, and when I say practice, I remember Pastor David saying these words. He said, if I have to ride the altar all the way to heaven, yes. I'll do that. And my, my question is this. How often do you pray? There's somebody out there this morning listening to this. I don't know who it is. I don't think there's... The message is for people in this church service, but there is somebody online that need to hear this. I know it in my heart. You're listening to this, and my question is, you're listening, right? We're doing something with it here. But my question is, what are you going to do with this message? What are the words that are out there? Where are you going to go after this? What are you going to do after this? What are you going to do? What else can God do? God can't do nothing after this. Make up your mind. Yes. Make up your mind now. What you going to do. All you need to do is pray more. You need to get on your knees more. Make it a habit. Amen. Give yourself to it. Yes. Give yourself to prayer to Jesus. Amen. And he will do it. Yes. But that's all God can say. The Lord is good. We're going to find a book somewhere. We're going to go to another church. We're going to listen to all these different sermons online. The message is yours. This is the message. Yes. And until you do this, you're not getting anywhere in God. That's right. There's somebody online, Sister Constance. All right. Sister Alice. Because we know what God can do. That's yes. right. Yes. But the question is, when are you going to join the family and going to find out for yourself Amen. what God can do? Hallelujah. This hopeless message is a, is a bunch of cow manure, you know? It's just this hopeless mess. Hopeless. It's just hopeless. God's image is hopeless. Mm -hmm. You were made in God's image, right? right. You were made in God's image. What does that mean? That means that when God formed Adam, God formed Adam, made Adam look how he looked. Gave him a gave him a face, gave him eyes, a nose, lips. Adam don't look, he was not made in the image of a horse. Right. God did not make horses in his image. God made men and women in his image. Yes. He made us in his image. And what is God's picture going around talking about I'm hopeless? Right. God, that's like God saying, God making the image of himself to go, I can't do it, man. I tried this and I tried that. What does that make God look like? Mm -hmm. God is not hopeless. Right. He said, my image shouldn't Amen. be hopeless yes. either. Amen. Amen. Is this all right? Amen. Yes. Because he said, I am the God, he said, of abundance. Amen. And he wants us to have that attitude that we serve the God of abundance. And with our heads bowed and eyes closed and reverence to the Lord, the question again is, what are you going to do to the message? Re Re Reverend Davis, what do I need to do? You need to call on the name of God. You need to ask him for forgiveness. You need to ask him to forgive you for, for doubting him. 
A. You need to ask him to forgive you for doubting his power. Forgive you for doubting that he can do it and that he wants to do it. We need to start off with that first. Forgive me, Lord, for doubting that you can and that you want to do it. And then ask him to cleanse your sins and accept him and his power. Accept the Lord as your savior and tell Jesus, I'm going to walk with you from this day forward. I'm going to walk with you. I'm not going to give up on you. I'm going to walk with the God that's able to feed over 5,000 with just a few fishes and a few loaves of bread just to have leftovers in the nighttime hour. Call upon him.
give him a chance. Stick with him. Plead to him. As David said, I will plead to you and um, walk with him. And, and you're gonna, your whole world will open up and you'll wonder to yourself, as Earl Nightingale said, how can you have lived any other way? You'll look back and, and wonder, going, wow. And there's one regret, if you're older, there's one regret, you probably say, man, I should have been doing this a long time ago. All right? And so we need to follow God, stay level-headed till we meet again tonight. Amen? We live by faith, not by emotions. We go we follow God and relax and be at peace. Because if you've made it right, the Lord wants you to get out of the panic mode, getting out of that, calm that down, because our minds are stayed on Jesus. Amen. Our minds are on Jesus now. Get your head out of that circumstance and all that. It's there, yes, it's real, but the Lord will take care of you. He's still the God of abundance. Yeah. Get, your, get your mind on Jesus. Get away from this panic stuff. Let us go ahead and dismiss in prayer. I would like to ask Sister Davis, ma'am, if you don't mind dismissing us, please. Father, thank you for this service. Thank you, Lord, for your words of power and encouragement and love. Lord, I ask, God, that, that this message would find a permanent place in every heart, every soul that has listened, either online or in person, God. And Lord, I also ask that you would please keep your hand upon each and every one of us, Lord. Give us wisdom as we go throughout our days, Lord God. And Father, bring us back tonight at 6.30 to worship you and to hear more of your word. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 May God bless you real good. Church tonight.